So I'm getting ready to add some texture to the mountains. And one thing that I did, and I recommend that you do this as well, is to look up some pictures. So you can either look up photographs of the objects that you're drawing, whether it's mountains or a palm tree or some kind of um, like flower, anything that you're gonna be including in your painting, you can look up photographs and you can also look up how other people have painted them. So pretty much for this entire project, if there's anything that you're not sure how to paint, if you look up some pictures, do a Google search, do a YouTube search, you should be able to find something that can help you. So when I looked at some pictures of mountains and I looked at some photographs and I looked at some paintings, one of the things that I was drawn to in some of them was mountains that had some brown color in them. So I'm going to incorporate some browns into my grays just to add a little depth of color and some texture. So one thing that I'm noticing is this is getting too blended. I didn't really like where I was going. I tried to fix it, tried to build up some layers, but I'm just not happy with it. This one I'm okay with. Um, it doesn't look super realistic, but I like the different changes in color. And I think if I add some snow, it will work. Um, but I'm not happy with this one. So I'm just gonna show you what I would do um, if I don't like something. So I'm gonna go back um, with my gray and I'm just going to paint over it. Um, some of that brown color will still show through and it's going to change the overall color of the mountain, but that's okay. I'll pick up a little bit more white just to keep it a little lighter. But this is the nice thing about oil paint is if you mess up, it's pretty easy to cover. Um, and one thing I noticed too when I got down close to this meadow area because that green was still really wet, I was picking up some green on my brush without meaning to and it was smearing in, which was also part of the reason why I had to keep working this and wasn't really happy with the direction that it was going. So I'm just gonna cover this up. Um, now, because I've covered it up, that means I'm gonna have to wait another day um, to come back to this mountain, but that's okay. I've got time. So I'm just gonna cover that up with my gray again and try again later. But I'll try this one, see if I can get some texture. Now this one's a lot farther away. So I want my textures to be really, really subtle. Um, and again, you know, I'm not going for super realistic here. Um, I'm just trying to show some texture um, and some color variations. Now that's really what texture is. It's going to be created by how you hold your brush, how lightly you put the brush on the canvas, how much paint you have on your brush. So for this, um, I switched to a smaller brush and I tried to make sure that I didn't have very much paint because I wanted the bristles to stay separated so I could get some of that gray showing through. And I used a really light touch um, so I could still use that color underneath to show through. So um, there's different ways to do it. I could, um, and I'll show you on this one, I can tap the brush for some different textures instead. And actually, I really like this. Maybe I should have started with this uh, technique because I actually think this looks a lot better. So now knowing that, because I'm really liking how this texture is turning out, maybe I'll go back and change that one. But this paint was really just the leftover paint from here. So it's getting a little f like fuzzy, like a tree. So I'm just kind of pulling some of that color and remember to go to the edges because you don't want it to look like your texture just stops right before. And now I'm just gonna kind of lightly brush just to kind of soften that up. But I actually like this texture quite a bit better than this one. So I might go back and try something similar. Um, I've got a little bit of spot here where I've accidentally gone into the blue. So I'm just gonna take a clean brush and just kind of brush that out a little bit and just kind of blend it into the blue and you can see it's hardly visible. I'll just grab a tiny bit of blue on my brush and see if I can cover that up. Just that tiny little spot of gray. 
and then just lightly feather that out so it blends in with the sky. So again, I think I like this better than this. So a lot of this oil painting is gonna be trial and error and trying some different things. So I think I'm gonna go back over here and maybe try something similar to this. And if it doesn't work, I can just cover it up again. So I definitely like that better. Um, and now it's more brown than gray, so I think I'm gonna go back in with some lighter grays and kind of bring some of that back out. But again, how you hold your brush is a big factor in how the textures and the colors are gonna blend. So when I'm tapping the brush, I'm transferring the color and I'm not really blending it into what's there. A little bit of blending will occur but not as much as if I was using a full brush stroke. So this texture is much more subtle. Um, I like how that looks a lot better. And now that I know what I like, it'll be a lot easier to go back onto this one. And because I'm using this tapping, uh, motion instead of a brush stroke. I actually think be, even though this is wet, I might be able to go back in. So I'm gonna try and see if I can add that texture there too. The other thing I'm gonna do is try some slightly different color variations. So I've got my brown, the raw umber is what I'm using, along with some white and some gray. So just to give myself um, a little bit of a change in color. So this one, it is blending a bit more, which is okay. Doesn't look quite as good as these two, um, so I think I might let that sit and maybe come back to it. Before I begin adding the texture on my own painting, I want to show you a couple different things that might be helpful. Um, so I'm using some blue mat board. I'm gonna show you a couple different ways uh, to paint clouds. And first I want to kind of paint an example of what I don't wanna see. So what I would like you to avoid is kind of the cotton ball cloud where the shape is very uniform and it is a solid white kind of fluff ball, okay? That is not going to look very realistic. And I know that I said our paintings don't have to be super realistic, but we do wanna make some attempts to try and make things look relatively accurate. So let's avoid this and I'll show you a couple of things that you can do uh, to make your clouds look a little bit more realistic. So one thing, if you do want more of like the puffy cloud, there's a couple things to keep in mind. One is that usually along the bottom, there's a shadow uh, on the cloud because these types of clouds are thicker, they actually do block the sunlight. So we end up seeing a shadow side on the bottom and then the other thing to keep in mind is they're not necessarily a uniform shape. You might have some smaller little kind of bumps of the clouds, or maybe one side is bigger than the other. So if you would like to do more fluffy clouds, here's a better way to do it. The, what I like to do is rather than start with white, I like to start with some lighter gray. So I would start by putting some gray down on the bottom first, and then I can kind of lightly create the shape that I want. So let's say I want something like this. So again, usually it's bigger on one end. I'm not filling in the whole thing with gray, but leaving some spots for the white and the blue to show through. So I've got kind of a basic shape. So I've got my shadow. Then I'll go in with the white and kind of highlight the tops of those clouds and maybe put in some more fluffs in the clouds. But again, I'm allowing that gray to kind of show through a little bit. It will blend a little bit on the canvas and that's what you want. And if it blends too much, if the whole cloud ends up looking gray, you just need to wipe off your brush, get that gray off, go back into the white 
and add another layer of white. This will also help because if you can see some layers in kind of the fluffy part of the cloud, that will also help it look more realistic. And then usually what I like to do just as a finishing touch is to take a nice soft clean brush and then just lightly brush over it. And that will just help kind of soften the edges of where the colors meet and you'll end up with something that looks a little bit more realistic than this. Again, it's not perfect, but it's pretty, um, it's more realistic than this one. The other option is to make some more like wispy clouds and if you wanted to make something that had um, more transparency to it, so the clouds are thin and you can kind of see the blue sky behind them, you'll want to use more oil for clouds like that. So I'm gonna dip my brush in the oil first, pick up just a little bit of the white, but I want it to be relatively thin. And then I could go in with some long, very light brush strokes, so I'm barely touching the canvas and that will give you just kind of back and forth a little bit like this, depending on how much space you want your clouds to take up. That will give you some wispy clouds. And again, I like to go back with a clean brush over it and just lightly soften the edges. Okay, so there's two types of clouds that you can try. Um, use your sketchbook. It will be helpful to practice some different techniques in your sketchbooks, especially when you start doing the textures. The next thing I want to show you are two basic ways to do trees. So I'm going to show you an example of a deciduous tree and an example of a pine tree. Now these are just examples. There are lots of different types of trees. So I would recommend that you at the very least look up pictures of the type of tree that you want to paint or look up videos of how to paint those things. Um, these are just two basic examples to get you started. So the first thing that we're going to do is start with the trunk of the tree. And for this, I'm using the burnt sienna uh, for the brown. You could mix a different color if you want. This is just for the sake of the example. And you wanna mix a lot of oil into it because you want the paint to just glide over your canvas. So you need quite a bit of oil for that to happen. So I'm gonna pick up my paint and you're gonna start with the main trunk of the tree. So I'm gonna draw those first and then we'll do the leaves after that. So I like to hold my brush vertical, and so I'm using kind of a square tipped brush, and so I'm going to paint um, with the brush edge going down like this, and then you'll, I'll rotate my brush, so that way eventually I'm painting with the brush going down this way, and that will give me a wider line as we go down for the trunk. And I'm not worried about keeping it straight because tree trunks aren't straight. And so I rotated the brush about halfway, and so you can see as I increase my pressure going down, the trunk of the tree gets wider. And I'll pick up some more paint again. We wanna make sure that we have a lot of oil so we can try and do this in one fluid movement as best we can. And now I need to start thinking about the limbs. So if I'm doing something like a deciduous tree first, we know that we have the main trunk and then the branches go outward. So you could start at the trunk here and work your way out, or you could start at the end and bring your uh, brush back towards the trunk, whatever makes sense to you, either one will work. But we're just gonna draw in a few kind of tree trunk, bigger branches, I should say. So that one got a little bit thick here, but I could just cover that up. And then some smaller branches going off. Um, you could switch to a smaller brush for this, that might make it a little bit easier but you just need to show a few branches going off from the main part of the trunk. And you could, again, if you wanted a bigger tree, if it was closer up, you could add more paint down here as well to make the trunk wider. But you just need a few little limbs. Most of this will be covered by leaves. I'm assuming it's a leafy tree, um, but you could leave it like this if you were doing a winter scene and all the leaves had fallen off. But this is kind of a basic tree trunk for a deciduous tree. For a pine tree, again, I'm gonna do kind of a basic tr Christmas tree shape for the pine tree. If you were doing a white pine, um, you know, most of the needles and the branches are at the top and then the trunks are pretty bare. Um, but I'm gonna do kind of a Christmas tree shape. So same thing, I'm gonna start at the top with my brush going down this way and then I'll rotate it so my brush goes down um, a little wider near the bottom. 
And the other thing is as I rotate my brush, I'm also increasing the pressure so that way the bristles spread out more too, okay? Now for me, you could add some branches. So usually with a pine tree, the branches grow more outward like this, and then they get smaller as you go to the top. So you could put in some branches, but usually when I'm painting a pine tree, I don't like to do a lot of branches because I tend to fill it in a little bit more solid. If you're doing a deciduous tree though, like a maple tree or an oak tree, you tend to see more of the branches through it, so I like to draw more for that. So this is the basic shape for the trunk, and now we'll move on to the leaves. One of the most important things to remember when you're painting um, anything that's plants really, so whether it's trees or bushes or even grass, is to think about having multiple shades of a color. So a tree is going to look more realistic if we have multiple shades of green rather than one solid green. And when you're painting the leaves on, you usually wanna start with your darker colors first and then do some highlight colors on top. So I'm gonna start with a darker green here um, and then put some lighter shades on top. So I'm using one of my stiffer bristle brushes because we still wanna see the texture when we're painting these leaves. And so for this, I'm not really gonna brush the paint on, I'm gonna tap it on because that texture will give the illusion of foliage. So I'm gonna start with where the branches are. And that's a pretty common mistake that people make with trees is they kind of start in the middle. But when you're painting leaves, you need to think about where do the leaves grow and they grow at the end of the branches. And so I'm just tapping it on and you can see it's starting to build up some texture you can see the branches through. Now, if you didn't like seeing the branches through, you would just add more layers of paint to cover that up. So you can see some areas are thicker than others. And really, you just keep going until you like how it looks. Important things to remember about trees though is that the leaves get thinner at the end of the branches, so you do wanna kind of space them out, and you should still see some of the tree trunk showing through. So I've got some gaps here in my tree. So I could do a couple layers of this darker color, fill it in more if I didn't like the look of the tree trunk, and then once I was happy with that base layer, I would go back with some lighter tones. And the lighter colors are mainly at the top of the tree and at the end of the branches. And so I've got a little bit of yellow mixed in for that light green, and it's okay if some of that shows through. It will just look like they're getting more sun in that part of the tree. But this technique should give you some nice texture, and again, using multiple colors is what is going to give you the look of tree texture rather than one solid color. For the pine tree, I'm going to use some darker shades of green, um, simply because pine trees are usually a little bit darker in color. And so for this one, there's a couple different techniques that you can use. So I'm gonna paint one side of the tree with one technique and then the other side with a different technique so you can see the difference. So one technique, um, and some of you may have seen this in the Bob Ross videos, is to start your brush vertically and then instead of tapping kind of all over the place, you actually tap in these kind of curved lines and so I'm keeping the brush so it's like this, so it's like this on the canvas. You can see how my brush is facing. And again, if you think about a tree, sometimes the branches are not um, all the way filled in, so you might have some gaps. You might have some, even though they're lower branches, that might be a little bit shorter. It's having those kind of inconsistencies that will make it look more realistic. If it was all the same size and every branch was the same length or it went out the same width in a consistent way, it might not look as realistic. And again, I'm gonna fill in the texture a little bit more as I get down to the bottom because usually the branches are a little fuller down at the bottom of the tree. And again, I would go back with this too with a slightly lighter green 
More just at the tops though, where the branches are new and maybe getting a little bit more light and put in some lighter tones there. So for this one, I start at the top and work my way down. For the other side of the tree, I'm actually gonna start at the bottom and do some more overlapping. So again, I would start with some darker colors. And for this, I'm going to mimic some, a tree that has longer needles. So I'm gonna do a little bit more overlapping. And I actually want the paint a little bit thicker. But I'm kind of using the brush stroke to go out to give the impression that the branches are swooping out. And so you can see, it's not necessarily super realistic, but if I kind of cover that up, you get the illusion of a pine tree, kind of like a Christmas tree. So those are kind of three different ways to do trees. Um, again, when you are painting something like a landscape, unless you have a tree that's very, very close, um, as long as you get a little bit of texture and the shape right, it's okay if it doesn't look perfectly realistic. So for my painting, um, the areas that I know I need to add texture, I'm gonna add some snow to the mountains, I'm going to add some grass texture to this meadow, and then paint my trees. Now, I'm not going to talk through that, I'm just going to paint and you guys can watch it and then we'll wrap it up at the end. So I am pretty happy with how this looks. So the textures that I've added, as you can see, I added some snow on my mountains. And um, basically for that, what I did is I took my stick and I just cut it at an angle so I could kind of scrape the paint onto the canvas. And then I added some grass texture with this. And uh, you could see I just kind of tapped it on and then did some light upward strokes just to give the illusion of some grassy texture painted my trees and then added a few little dots of color to look like flowers. And I'm pretty happy with how this looks. So hopefully you all enjoy oil painting. I hope it goes smoothly for you. I really wish um, we could have done this together, but hopefully um, you could enjoy the experience at home. And if you have any questions, make sure you get in touch. Bye guys.